Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Today, um, the idea is to present to you the Strini Dabs. So, the Strini Dabs was a repo that I think that I introduced to it uh, last year because there were some people like interested in checking cross exchange market making opportunities, how to check the spreads, uh, which is the volume of different markets. So, well, as uh, it was a, a, a thing that a lot of people were interested in, I decided to create a new repo that is Trinity Dubs. That, well, after working these days, uh, because I have this monthly community call, I have to recap all I know about uh, Trinity Dubs. I, I started all, all again, the, I refactor all the, the pages that I had before, and probably we can start working better with this kind of project. The thing is that I will need some help from your side, like bringing ideas up to the table and well, creating new new stuff over there. So the idea of today is to well, show you which are the pages that we have right now, how you can extend one of the pages. And yesterday and the day before, I was working <laughs> a lot of time for you guys in probably can be called like Hannibal dashboard. That is like a new page that I think that can be something like the main page that has all the analysis of the bot uh, of the of the trading or of the trade activity of the bot uh, is work in progress because I only work on that two days, but I think that is very promising and we can start with the new deploy that we have using docker compose. We can easily add this service uh, to the docker compose file. And when you run the bot, all the database is stored in the folder that is data and the, uh, the dashboard will check the same folder. So when you run Docker Compose up, then you can access localhost and see the orders, see the table. I will show you now what, what I built. But well, basically this is a repo that, the, that is related to the Strini tabs. So, uh, give a start if you if you want. Uh, it will be good to have more stars here. And uh, well, essentially the structure that you have here is the main page. That is, you have here a video, and here in pages you are going to see like different pages to analyze the information of the bot. Right now I'm going to run it locally just to show you how it works. And there is some things that is my work, the work that I did uh, the last two days that is not here, but I will because I'm trying to update to use Conda to here. So I'm doing a lot of fix from the environment standpoint. But once I have that ready, I will upload all the changes and you are going to be able to use it. So well, here I have uh, the, the repo. So as I mentioned, uh, you can clone the repository and start working by your own. You're going to find certain folders. This folder is data, is where the databases are going to be stored. Um, in this case, if we create the container, as I mentioned, the with Docker Compose file, this will be like an amount that will be shared between the dashboard and the bot. So this, you are not going to, you, you don't need to add any database here. It will be added automatically uh, when the bot starts running. Then here we have these utils. I have some CoinGecko utils and some minor utils in terms of getting information from the minor campaigns. And also I have some uh, graphs. These are like some uh, functions, uh, one class to to have some helper functions on graphs. For example, this one is for the candlesticks that I will show you later on. And it, it lets you add the buy, the buy trades, the sell trades, the Bolling, Bollinger Bands. Well, later on, we are going to add more technical indicators and probably can be very good for you if you want to make some analysis of, okay, this is where uh, how my bot trade where it places the orders. Okay, if I have these indicators, how the bot should be, will perform. So this will be very good for you in case that you want to add indicators on top of the graph and see the performance of your bot based on, I don't know, volatility, uh, whatever you want. Then you have here another one that is data manipulation. <clears throat> that essentially you have one class here that is strategy data. That is the data of orders, order status and trade fields from just one config file. When you run a strategy, you have a config file and you have all the orders and all, well, this is like the information filtered of just one strategy. And well, I have some properties here to access 
um, to, to the, later on get some metrics about the performance of the strategy. I, 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 I will ask you some help in order to review this because as I mentioned, I did it this in two days. So probably some of the calculations are wrong uh, or probably not, but well, essentially I would like to show you what you can do. Well, in terms of pages, we have five, uh, yeah, five, seven pages. The first one is cross exchange token analyzer that we are going to check right now. The objective of this page is to check all the, the exchanges that are available for Hummingbot and the token that you want. So you're going to say, okay, I would like to see, I would like to trade Avalanche. Okay, I, will, I want to trade Avalanche, which are the markets that are available uh, on the exchanges that Hummingbot has. So you're going to find Avalanche, USDC, Avalanche, USDT, uh, well, uh, different combinations. So the idea there is you can pick a market that has high liquidity and low spread to be taker and one that has a high spread. So with that, you can do cross exchange market making and this is one of the exchanges that you can start doing that observation. Remember that these metrics are like average of the day from CoinGecko, so can be higher or lower based on the trading activity of the moment, but it's a good metric because the mean is that one. So you can have more deviations and have spot more opportunities up there up to that uh, value. Then we have the data folder. Uh, well, I, I will run the, the dashboard and I will show you the, the, the pages uh, as it is right now. So uh, as I mentioned, I have here the, the main page. Here you have a video of the, some explanation. Here you have a cross exchange token analyzer. That, as I mentioned, well, you, here you have Avalanche, the exchanges that we have in the code base. And based on this, uh, it creates uh, this graph that you can check. This is a bit as spread. This is logarithmic because uh, the values were very different between them. So as you can see, for example, this is AVAX USDT is the pair that has the most of the volume and, uh, well, it's in Binance. And uh, for example, in Bitfinex, you have uh, the business spread of 0.3%. So, well, with this information, you can find uh, markets to do cross exchange market making. You can add here, for example, uh, other tokens, I don't know, injective. Um, and based on this, you are going to have the two graphs here. You can compare the two trading pairs. So here you're going to see, okay, in, this is injective and this is AVAX. Okay, the trading volume on USD is similar between AVAX and injective. This is injective. And the bid as a spread also is a little bit similar, but there are some more opportunities probably on injective to, to do some cross exchange market making. Uh, well, this pair of Binance USDT is well, well arbitraged. It has a spread, very, very tiny, tight spread. So, well, with this, you can start like looking up for opportunities, searching from tokens, all that stuff. How you can search for a token here? Well, uh, you can add another page to look for tokens, to do filter tokens by volatility or other stuff as you want. And also you can use this page that is data. I would recommend you to use this page that is data to first of all, analyze the information that you want to add to your graph. In the idea of, of this page is to load like the raw data, which is which are the tables that you have available to start working on. And based on the tables that you have available, this is how, for example, if I select the token and I select the exchanges, this is a table where I, that I am using to create the other graph. I'm using the bid as a spread percentage and the volume in USD. So that is how I'm building the other graph here, the volume. So with this, I would recommend you to check which is the data that you have available based on the, on the API that I, that I created from the API, no, the, the, the class that I created from CoinGecko Utils. So you have all coins DF, all coins markets DF. Well, with all these uh, the, uh, methods, you are going to be able to find the information that you want. First of all, my recommendation is write a table. Once you have a table, then you can see which is a graph that you want to build. And based on that, you can start searching for another kind of tokens or filtering, for example, tokens based on uh, um, volatility or whatever you want. One important thing is that if you have any suggestion, I would, rec I would strongly recommend you to create a GitHub issue here. I, I created two issues uh, uh, yesterday. 
since I found some issues with the SQLite or the, 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 the prices and the traffic calls for paper trade. So I created these issues. And the good thing is that as we are using Honeybot, we can create issues to investigate how why Honeybot is storing information in a bad way and then create a PR in Honeybot and fix the issue in Honeybot. So well, I would recommend you to create issues here. <coughs> well, here in coins, also probably it's a good idea instead of using Avalanche, use Avax. So if anyone wants to create a PR to change this, feel free to do it. Uh, well, the next thing that will, the next page that I will show you is Honeybot database. This is good in, in case that you want to inspect information of your bot. For example, you have a, you run a bot, you have some results and you want to know the information about one order, for example, well, you can here click on browse files, select one database from your computer. This is like from your local computer. And once you create, once you load the database, all this information, all the tables of the bot will be shown here. So you have inventory costs, metadata, funding payment, market state. This market state is the one that is like stored when the bot stops and if, if it has an order open. And this is what the bot is using to recover. When it's recovering, it's using this uh, market state uh, table. Then here we have the orders table. So you have all the IDs of the orders and the information, where it was created, the price, last status, well, here you can also do something like filter all the ones that were completed. Uh, well, you have like different options. And you have here also lab, uh, last update timestamp and creation timestamp. So you have the duration of the order. So well, you can do whatever you want with this. But essentially, uh, this is like to analyze all the, the information. And also we have here the, the table of trade fields and the order status. As you can see from the bot, the most important uh, tables are Funding payment in case you, that you are using some funding arbitrage strategy and order order trade field and order status. These are the most important ones because this one shows all the orders and the initial and final state of the order. Trade field shows only the fields, the trades. And order status shows all the changes when the, the order was created, when the order was uh, uh, Field when the order was cancelled, when the order was failed, well, all the different timestamps with the events of the orders. Well, this page is very useful in case that you want to analyze the database. Then we have this one that is a TBL versus market cap analysis. This one is one page that we created with Mike. Uh, essentially, here uh, is a regression between the. This is a simple uh, a regression between the the TBL, a market cap of the different protocols. But essentially here in this, in the x-axis, you have the TBL of the protocol and in the y-axis, you have the market cap. So, and the different colors are the different chains. So for example, if you want to check in Ethereum, this is like the, the ratio that you have. Seems like uh, WBTC and MikeRDAO are the ones that has more TBL. Uh, well, th there is one thing strange here. Also, if anyone wants to uh, help me with the review, because Uniswap is not appearing here, but I will need to check that. If, if anyone wants to work, we will be good. DYDX is very cool too. Well, here you can analyze like protocols. This is more like from research. Like, okay, I would like to analyze a protocol. I would like to trade some token from a protocol that seems like it's interesting. Well, you can do it from here. And the second thing that is interesting from this graph is this sunburst that, as you can see, now shows the top protocols by category. So as you can see, the first part is multi-chain, Ethereum, Polygon. Well, here you have like the chains and the different uh, the, the different chains that you have. Multi-chain is, is the protocol is in multiple chains. And the second part of the, of the sunburst is the type of service that they are providing. So here you have divided by liquidity staking, DEXs, lending, yield. Well, these categories are going to be the same in the different protocols. So then you can see which is the most important for each chain, which is the most important uh, like market or the most important service that the, the protocols are providing and which is the TBL. This is like uh, showing the, the, the TBL, the size of the 
the size of the of the of the sunburst of each category is the TBL. As greater than TNL, the, the TBL greater will be like the, the, the make it out here. One thing is that if you want to have the, for example, the top three, you can add here or move the sidebar here to add more more values. As you can see, the sunburst is getting modified. And the good thing is that this sunburst is pretty cool. I like to, to show how it works. But if you click, for example, here on Ethereum, it will be open and you can see all the different things on Ethereum that you are interested in. For example, I, I would like to know, I don't know, uh, liquidity staking. Okay, Rocket Pool seems like it's like uh, winning here the battle. And then we have shared stake and well, if you want to come back, you click there. If you click on multi-chain, then you are going to have yield, lending, DEXs. Okay, so well, that's, that's essentially uh, how this page works. This is more like for research. So if you want to do some research on on, on, on DeFi, uh, can be good. Well, this one from GitHub Analysis, I will probably remove this from here since, uh, well, I, I removed the, the dependency too. Was like an idea to analyze our bugs, but it's better to watch it directly on GitHub. And the last one is like the, the surprise for today. This is a page that I have been working the last few days and it shows the analysis of the performance of the bot. So essentially, uh, here you have simple PMM SQLite. This is a database that I have here inside, inside data. It's reading the database from here. So when we have this setup with Docker Compose uh, running with the dashboard and the bot at the same time, you are going to be able to run local host and see the status of the bot that is running. That's one of the coolest things. So here you, I'm selecting the database and also it's important to select the config file that you want to analyze because in the same database, you can have more than one config file. So this is another thing that you will probably need to select uh, to analyze the performance of different strategies that are running there. Here we have uh, some columns like market, it was trading on Binance, BTC, USDT, general stats is a start date and the end date. So it was running almost for one day with some gaps because I run one part, then I'll stop the bot and then, then like some hours, well, we are going to see that on the graph, but some hours later on, I turned the bot on again. And this was with paper trade. In this case, I used the simple PMM example with fixed, uh, with 0 0.02 uh, VLAS spread, just to have a lot of fields and, and be able to show you some fields on the graph. This is a paper trade, so I ran it yesterday to, to see this. So here we have the start price, the end price. This is when the, and, and at this time, when, when, which was the price, and at this time, which was the, the end price, and the price change from the start to the, to the end. Also, we have here the performance. It tells me, okay, I made 153 trades, 76 were buys, 77 were trades. Th then I have the inventory change in base asset. Here I find a problem because in the database we are not storing the balances. But then I think about it and I say, okay, I don't need the balances right now since I would like to understand really well the trade PNL for now. Then we can think about of improving the database. But for now, I think that the, the, I, I will also show you uh, my notion, my notability graph to show you how I design this page. But essentially, uh, the balance uh, is good to have it later on because we can see like the inventory uh, ranging. But for now, I'm, I'm going to be focusing on trade PNL that is like isolating the trading activity of the market making. And now I will explain why I did this like this. Okay, now we have the inventory change balance in, in base asset. This is buy minus sell, pretty easy. And then I have the trade PNL in USD and the average buy price and the average sell price. This is doing like all the trades, amount multiplied by price, amount multiplied by price uh, of all the buys and all the sells and then divided by the total traded. So here in market activity, uh, this is like more like an description of the overall uh, behavior of the bot. Here in market activity, 
I have the the buys and sells. This is also a work in progress. Uh, I'm I'm planning to do it like better. Uh, probably changing the size of the of the red uh, of the triangles. But essentially, here you can see all the trades, the trading activity that you have uh, in the bot. <clears throat> one thing that is important is that here I'm using candles interval of one hour. Um, probably you want to see it like more in depth. So if you want to change it, you can just, you can easily click here and change it, I don't know, for three minutes. That will download the candles from three minutes from the other range that both was running. And what, once it's ready, I'm having, and now I have the candles of three minutes and I can see the, <coughs> the trading activity of, of three minutes. So as you can see, the bot was running, was running here, then I stopped the bot, and then I started running the bot here again. And if you want to analyze some parts, you can easily do something like this and check where the bot was buying and selling. Uh, well, I think that this is very, very cool since now you can watch the, the activity of your bot directly on, 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 a, on, on a local host. Uh, we need to stream it up and you don't have to move anything from anywhere. It's just running this, selecting the mode that you want to check, selecting the time frame that you want. Uh, with this, you can just see what the bot is really doing. As you can see here, I have the Bollinger Bands. For that, I will add also here uh, a form that will say which is the, the indicators that you want. I, will, I won't add so much indicators because I can add all them all but it's a lot of work in terms of, of maintaining the, the calculations and all that stuff. But well, I will let you configure a little bit this uh, so you can take some decisions based on the value of the indicator at that moment. So with this uh, here, well, we have the, the volume. You can also filter the, the graph like this. So it's pretty good. It's like cross filtering the volume and the, and the, and the OHLC. And also if you want to, well, here I also print, this is another thing that you will probably like is that here I have the traits and the orders, uh, table. So you have the information that you're seeing here. You can also watch it here, but the good thing is that I added this range uh, to analyze because probably you want to isolate one part of the run. So you're going to see, I would like to run from here. Well, it's uh, reloading. From here to, I don't know, suppose that is here. So I want to analyze just this part. And this should make that, well, it seems like it's, uh, well, probably it's working. No, it's not working. It's not working yet, but the idea, <laughs> is to, uh, let's see if I also, ah, there is a minimum that I can use. Well, it's not working yet, but the idea of this is that if you select a certain range of, of the bot, you can also um, filter cross filter these tables of the trades that happens here and the orders that happens here with the range that you are looking for. So it's, Clearly, it's not working because it's showing all the orders and all the the, the trades. But well, I will fix it and then I will upload it with, with a fix. Yesterday, I was up to 4 a.m. to show you this. So don't, don't be bad, bad with me. <laughs> well, um, essentially, this is pretty, pretty easy uh, to do. I think that based on our, our current, uh, the current strategies that we are running, it will be good to have a different page to analyze, for example, cross exchange market making or arbitrage, probably for cross exchange market making and for arbitrage, you will probably don't need this. Uh, so, well, that's, that's a goal. Like, um, and probably, I don't know when if one good example is the one that, uh, Jackie created when was, the the bot camp, the last cohort, he created a, cross exchange market making strategy and he has like an analysis of the PNLs of all the, the trades that he made. So probably we can make something very similar 
and integrate it with the bot. So you don't have to manipulate the information outside of the bot and you can just run this with a Docker Compose and see what your cross change marketing making bot is really doing. So, well, this is suitable for now. I would recommend you to use this uh, dashboard only for market making and trading in just one exchange. Uh, one thing that I can add that will be making the things a little bit complex is to uh, basically search for a strategy, which are the, the all the, the trading pairs that you are using and create one of these uh, uh, graphs for each trading pair. So that can be another way to see the performance of multi a strategy that is running multiple trading pairs. But for now, I don't want to, to make the things complex. I would like to stick with this for now. And uh, based on your suggestions and the usage of this tool, uh, start adding like more features to this dashboard. But as I mentioned, I need your help because I'm the only one building this, so I need some help. <laughs> um, Mainly with the ideas or the design, because uh, the code, I can make it very fast, but uh, I would like to know what you really want to see. Uh, there is a question uh, from Maharashi says, how do you see conceptual differences and advantages of and disadvantages to Grafana influx approach? She, uh, Yela showed, uh, well, um, is, uh, is probably, Similar. The thing about Grafana is that if you don't know how to code uh, this kind of graphs, the graphs probably, but I would strongly recommend you to check the docs or ask ChatGPT. Well, ChatGPT yesterday wasn't working very well. I have to to tell him that he's not helping me so much because he's using like an old version of the documentation, and all the he sent me arguments that doesn't appear. So I, it was useless yesterday, ChatGPT. Or probably they are trying to make me pay ChatGPT for it, but I don't know. But with this, you can create the custom graph that you want. You can add interactive. You can create. This is more like flexible. So you can build with this. You can build the graph that you want with the data that you want. Collect data from multiple places. Add machine learning model. Add an indicator that you want to create and create a, a subgraph of that indicator. For me, this is much more flexible if you know how to code. And probably, depending on the data, we should be doing like a benchmark between uh, Grafana and this solution, since probably this solution uh, is going to be a little bit slower since if it's hosted by you. But as you can see, if you have not so much information, it's working pretty well. Depending on the size of the information, uh, uh, will be will be the decision. But I think that you can do uh, this um, much more flexible uh, pages or dashboards with Streamlit than with Grafana. The the good thing about Grafana is that you have solved all the things, all the connections, and so you don't have to to code anything. But this is well integrated with Hummingbot, uh, so will be something very, very similar. So, well, it's t t uh, the, the thing that you will, you will need to do is to test and see which is, which is better. And also, probably, this will be much more cheaper because you're going to run this in the same instance that you have the bot. Or if you want to be more professional, you will have a, a unified Postgres database and in, with that Postgres database, you are going to create this service that is pointing to that database and see all the results of the dashboards that you have there. But at the same time, I think that it's a good idea to run this dashboard in the same uh, place of the bot because depending on, on the on the, the quantity of strategy that you are running, but you have like isolated all the stuff and you can just access the local host and see what is the bot doing. Uh, Keith Emerson says uh, that looks really well, Fede. Thank you, Keith Emerson. Crypto Jorge says, or Crypto George says, I missed the beginning, so I'm not sure if you're ready. If you're ready, should we use the tool directly on the website, or is the concept here to download and install locally and use our? Oh, okay, 
This is a very good question, uh, Crypto George. In the website, you are going to have this this uh, this data available, but this data will be just for uh, show how to use it because this will be like an, a shared resource for all the the community that is using Hummingbot. But the idea is to run it locally. This uh, with your bot is like your bot. We are going to have a. Let me show you. Let me let me create an example. A quick example here. Uh, here in deploy examples, as you can see here, for example, uh, this example is uh, to run multiple bots and one gateway. So as you can see, the Docker. This is why I am encouraging all the people from the community to get rid of all the other all uh, installation methods and start learning Docker Compose. And later on, you can learn Kubernetes, but it's a little bit more advanced too. But this is my recommendation. Take it or, or leave it. But using Docker Compose will let you create custom things like this or run multiple bots with this. So as you can see, in this case, I'm writing, I'm writing two bots, one in ADA USDT and one in ETH USDT. Um, they are sharing the data folder and they are sharing the logs, the strategies, and all that stuff. So if I would like to add, uh, and I also have the gateway here. So if I would like to add a dashboard, the dashboard that I created right now will be something like a dashboard. This is, will be the, the name of the service. Container name will be a Hummingbot dashboard. Image, this will be something like a Hummingbot. Uh, for now it's stream lead apps latest. And then volumes, this is the only thing that we'll, I will need, will be the same. Uh, Hummingbot data, uh, sorry, Hummingbot files, data, and data. So as you can see, sorry, I forget to add this. So as you can see in this case, this is the only thing that I need is adding the volume of Hummingbot files data to the data folder that is inside the dashboard that is this one. So what is going to happen inside this folder when the container is running, this uh, Hummingbot files data that is where this bot is sending the database and where this bot is sending the database will be shared to this dashboard. And this dashboard is going to be able to see all the information from the database. So that's why I think that this is very powerful because you can just run Docker Compose up, run the quantity of bots that you want and analyze the performance of each bot. Uh, well, obviously you're going to need some extra things like defining the ports to expose all the stuff, but this is like the concept. Uh, well, Mike says, I think that stream is better than Grafana for Hummingbot since it's more optimized for Python and easy to use. Yeah, that's probably a, a very good thing. If you check the code here, the code of uh, of this page uh, is very easy. Well, depending on what you think about easy, but I have here some caches, uh, some columns, the metrics that I am building, uh, the the interval of the candles, the figure that I'm doing. Check that I am this add volume bands and it's doing something like this. Well, so the the page is the the less than 132 lines of code so it's pretty easy uh, mike says what information is needed from the config file to generate this data no there's no need any information no need for any information here since here we are getting the in the database and we are getting all the all the different config files that are inside the database so is no, no we, you don't need any information. This graph will show automatically for you. Uh, so, well, the only thing that you can change is, uh, I will create a spinner when it's loading to, to have a UI. Uh, the, new, the only thing that you can change is the, the resolution of the candles. And based on that, you're going to find some points that are not going to be like, uh, that are not going to be corresponding to any candle, but well, you can follow the pattern that you are trading. Then the next question is, Zoom13 says, it is possible to debug via PyCharm when using Docker-based Hummingbot bots? I thought you can only do it on local installs. 
Well, for that, uh, Zoom 13, I, uh, it's a good question. I am working on, on, on that. Uh, if you want, there is here a PR, simplify uh, Docker file. I started working on this since uh, a lot of pers a lot of people has issues with the installation. So what I did essentially is to get rid of the different Docker files for uh, ARM and AMD and the different environment YAML. So we're going to have just one install. And well, you here you have the different the Docker file and the environment simply file The next thing that I'm going to do, really, what what you said is to remove this CMD this part of the CMD that is being Hummingbot quick start. The last part of this Docker file is like trying to, is activating the environment and also uh, running the quick start. So what I will try to do is to see how we can get rid of this part and use the environment that we have in Conda uh, in PyCharm, like how to attach that environment and then run a Hummingbot with a Docker Compose with build dot and use like an dev containers and probably we are going to be able to debug. That's what I will I, will, I am trying to I will I will do. But well, it's not not a priority for now uh, since we have another priorities uh, in in our schedule. If you want to check the priorities uh, here, we have. In Hummingbot, this is a new feature. Hummingbot projects, Hummingbot roadmap draft. And as you can see here, uh, this is what we are going to do this year. So the first thing will be check all other types and add support for all other types for the connectors. Uh, I'm going to implement that for the gold connectors. And uh, we are going to create bounties for the community for the silver connectors. We are going to create bounties to add candles feed for all the silver exchanges. The dashboard to analyze the performance of the bot. Well, it started two days ago, so it's like this. Support withdrawal functionality and add more smart components and then create the Hyman bot library. So these are the things that we are going to work on. Well, coming back to the dashboard, this is all that I have to, to present to you uh, right now. It's very easy to use stream leads um, I would recommend you to go to stream lead, uh, docs here, and uh, you can see the stream documentation, API reference, and then you can see all the things. It's very well documented. The graphs are very beautiful and you can customize it as you want. Also the, I think that the light team is better for showing candles, but if you are selecting the dark team, also it's pretty cool. So you can change it as you want um, and see which is the best uh, style for your app. Uh, so, well, basically this is the, the work that I have been doing. Another, another thing uh, that is pretty cool that I would like to tell you is that this, oh, sorry. These tables that we are seeing here are like strictly tables that you can search um, and if you want, for example, you can run command F or check uh, probably this control F on windows. And for example, that you are looking for an ID that is, I don't know, three, six F. Well, I found it here. So it's like pointing me to a specific, the specific uh, uh, order that has that. So for example, Let's create an, an idea of, of, of how we can follow this. So we are going to copy this. Suppose that we are going to copy this. And then we are in the table of orders. We are going to find the order. And then the trace should match to the order that we are seeing here. Or for example, if we have the order status, the order table, that is order status, we can copy, uh, let me uh, let me show you how to modify this and show it the status too. So here, order, let's add a new subheader 
and set order status. And let's change this icon to, I don't know, Let's select the other one. And uh, here we're going to run order status. So in this case, we have to refresh the page. That's why I, I recommend stream lead because it's very easy to modify. Check that now we're going to have the new table here. So it, it was a very, very easy. That's why I recommend you to use these kind of open source tools. So for example, let's say that I want to uh, get an order that is uh, filled. For example, let's let's select this order ID. So if we are looking for this order ID here, we can copy paste it here, and we're going to find three results. This is the first result: cell order created. The second one is cell order filled, and the third one is cell order complete. So you have the three events, and you can get the timestamp of all the events. So if you have to make like I don't know. Uh, an analysis of where your order wo went, uh, what happens with a specific orders and all that stuff. Uh, you can easily use Streamlit and the feature of searching in all the table to do so. Uh, I found this very powerful. Mike says, is this updated code in Streamlit Dash Repo? No, no, it's not updated because as I mentioned before, I have some uh, environment issues. I will push the latest changes and you can start uh, playing around with this. Probably I will uh, change the order of this. I will get rid of this page of GitHub analysis. And uh, I will put strategy performance to the top. There, is, there are two things that I'm missing that is very important to discuss with you guys. So this is how I, if I use to, how I design the dashboards. Because one thing that is important before starting doing something is to, it's not all the time pressing keys. You have to start with a design of what you want to do and why you want to put some things and all that stuff. What I think that can be a good solution for this dashboard at the end of Honeybot is to have this page that is bot performance that we are going to have like in a box for each of the, one card for each of the bots. So for example, when I read an SQLite, I will read an SQLite Based on the SQLite, I will see which are the different config files. So I will have one card for each config file with some summaries like PNL, duration, and other stuff like that. Then I will have the second page that will be like the analysis of one specific card. So at this level is database and all the config files. This level is database plus strategy. So it will be database plus config file. So as you can see, I'm going to check the start time, the end time, the duration, the interval. This was another graph that I had before, but I prefer to make it like, like now with all this, uh, seems like it's a Notion page. And this PNL. Then here I will have this, that is the OHLC and the buys and sells, uh, as this is the graph that we have already. The next thing that I'm going to do is the PNL over time. So I'll create a, a line plot with the PNL over time and a bars for a specific uh, change of the days. And this is the variation of the inventory over time. So if you want to see how your inventory is changing over time, this is the next page that we are going to have. So this is the process that I use to design uh, this stuff. The next thing that I will also do, another page that is later on, is based on the directional framework. The directional framework is like dumping a CSV that has information of all the position executors. So for each position executor, we, we have the entry price, we have the take profit and the stop loss. So essentially what I'm going to do is to add to the candles, the entry price of the position executor and the ranges for stop loss and take profits. So you can visually check uh, if the bot is doing whatever you want to do or not. So this will, will be more like a laboratory for people that is trying to create directional strategies, uh, wants to see the signal on, on the graph. I was thinking about this yesterday. So if anyone wants to, to create or propose something better, uh, you, you can do it. 
uh, we can start like reviewing how to analyze the performance. Well, uh, HEC COP, I think that is Alan. Uh, yeah, the street it up will be running uh, in a public server uh, as it is right now, but uh, it's going to be an example. You are not going to be able to to check, uh, to use that for yourself because a lot of people is going to be using that. So for now, it's going to be like an example. And if for your bot, you will need to be able to to download, uh, to, down, to create your, your container for this. The last thing that I would like to tell you that is one of the, of the great, uh, one idea that I have that I think that can be very great is that obviously it's not for now, it's just an idea. And if the people really want this, we can start to trying to do this. But essentially these reports that I have here, I think that there can be a way to add a button and says share with the community. So probably we can create a user username, password, and all that stuff. Uh, once you have a strategy that works, and you try and you run one strategy uh, for a for a moment, I don't know. You can click that share button, and we can create like an, a, a a gallery of different quants of hummingbots that are running strategies. And they are like showing the performance of the strategies over time, but organized by market making strategies, cross chain market making strategies, pure market making strategies. I don't know. We can think about it a little bit uh, later on. But I think that for now it's a very good product as it is and it's useful for the, the user. The other solution can be more like community based. And if there is people interested in working on different projects, or if there is anyone that in the future wants to build, I don't know, a hedge fund and wants to present the results that they have, it's going to be like a unified way to show the performance that you have. So, well, that's essentially all guys and girls. Um, I don't know if you like it. I hope that you like it. Uh, I didn't sleep for you guys, so I hope that you like it. <laughs> uh, and well, I hope that this can be a new a new way to start exploring how Hannibal works in a better way. Another thing is that there is a much more performance solution than Streamlit, but as this is going to be a community tool, and um, how I see this in the future is this is going to be strategy performance will be the first page. And then you are going to have a, a checkbox or a select box with all the pages that you want. So anyone from the community can add a new page. And the user, when downloads the the container, will select which pages he wants to he wants to see. For example, I want to see the cross chain token market making analyzer. I want to see the signals page because we can create a signals page. I don't know. And then the tables are going to be showing here are going to be like the the ones that the user wants. So this is going to be like an, a community dashboard, fully decentralized and open source, and anyone can select the pages that he wants. Um, well, later on, uh, we can, we can start growing like these kind of pages and are adding more and more pages, uh, to this resource. So, well, that's essentially all. I say bye. Um, uh, thank you for watching.